The Bard Advanced Foley Tray System was designed to provide you with everything you need to safely and successfully insert a Foley catheter. The layout and design of this tray also serve the purpose of streamlining your sterile technique, which makes it easier for you to keep your patients safe from catheter-associated urinary tract infections. You may have seen doctors and nurses inserting Foley catheters and watched them discard a piece of the Foley kit or state, well, you can use this if you want. But with the Bard Advanced Foley Tray System, every item should be used with every insertion. With one small exception at St. Mary Mercy Hospital, the provided urine sample container and associated label are not able to be utilized by our lab, so you should replace them with the urine sample supplies used at our hospital. Before you begin, wash your hands and don clean gloves. To open the kit, locate the green arrow on the label. Slide your finger between the paper and the plastic and pull up on the paper to open the kit. With the kit label side up, remove the tray from the packaging. Included is an educational pamphlet that should be used to educate the patient. You will also see an orange sheet of stickers. You will need these after you have inserted the catheter. Position the tray so that the top flap will open away from you. By first opening away from you, you ensure you will not contaminate your sterile field by reaching across it to open the kit. After opening the two side flaps, you will notice supplies placed on top of the final flap. Everything in this Foley tray system is placed in the order that you will use it, so before opening the final flap, you will use the supplies provided on top of it. The first item is the underpad. There is a shiny side and a matte side. Slide this pad under the patient, shiny side down. This provides you with an extended clean work area. It helps you avoid contamination from the bed and also helps protect the sheets during insertion. The next item is a pack of Castile soap wipes that must be used to provide peri care prior to insertion. Oftentimes, you will see people avoid using these wipes, possibly because they know they'll use iodine swabs to disinfect later, but it is important to clean with the wipes prior to applying iodine. Think of it like cleaning a dirty floor. You should always sweep up the larger debris before you use a mop. There are three wipes in each pack. For males, begin at the urethral meatus and clean in a circular pattern towards the body. For females, use the first wipe to clean the labia furthest from you, wiping from top to bottom. The second wipe is used to clean the nearest labia, and the third is used to clean between labia. The last item before we open the final flap is a small hand sanitizer pouch. Remove your clean gloves. Pinch the pouch as indicated on the package to release the sanitizer. Then clean your hands. Open the last flap to reveal the remaining supplies. On top, you will see a pack of sterile gloves. Don them now. The fenestrated drape is another item that is often discarded. Do not throw this away. The drape is used to extend the sterile field around the insertion site. It further protects the patient from infection and allows you additional sterile space to work with. Position the opening of the drape over the insertion site and drop it into place without touching the patient. Some patient's size makes positioning this drape difficult. It is acceptable to fold the drape in half and use it to cover the patient above the insertion site. The syringe with the green plunger is filled with lubricant. Empty that syringe into the plastic tray. Remove the tray and place it next to the box, being careful to keep the tray inside of your sterile field. The remaining syringe is filled with sterile water that will be used to fill the balloon after insertion. Remove the plastic sheath from the catheter and attach the syringe to the port near the end of the tubing. Do not test the balloon by pre-inflating it. This is a step used in the past when the catheter was made from different material. Bard now tests balloons before packaging the catheters, and continued unnecessary inflation can actually cause damage to the catheter itself. Lubricate the tip of the catheter with the supplied lubricant, and leave the catheter in that lubricant while you complete the next steps. The iodine swabs are used to disinfect the area surrounding the insertion site to minimize risk of infection. Open the packet and place it on your sterile field. You could remove all three swabs and place them on the field, or remove each swab as needed. Take out the first swab. Use your non-dominant hand to stabilize and position the genitals, while you use your dominant hand to apply the iodine. From this moment forward, your non-dominant hand is no longer sterile, so you should not handle any sterile supplies with this hand. 
For females, use the first swab to clean the labia furthest from you, wiping top to bottom. Dispose of this swab, and with your sterile dominant hand, remove the second swab. Clean the labia nearest you, and dispose of that swab. Remove the third swab, and clean between the labia. For males, begin at the urethral meatus and wipe in a circular pattern down towards the body. With your sterile hand, take the catheter from the tray and insert it into the urethra. When you see urine flowing through the catheter tubing, insert the catheter an additional two inches and inflate the balloon. Always use the entire syringe of sterile water. The balloon was not designed to be under or over inflated. Gently pull back on the catheter until you meet resistance. The catheter is now properly seated in the bladder. You may or may not have an order for a urine sample, but you should remove a sample at this time in case one is needed. Use the St. Mary Mercy supplies for this sample, not the provided container. Fill in information on the appropriate stickers on the orange sheet. If you're inserting a Foley on an inpatient unit, use the three stickers indicated. The long sticker should be placed on the front of the bag. If it is a metered bag, place it on the side of the meter. The other stickers can be placed on the back of the Foley bag. The Foley bag should be hung below the level of the patient. It can be attached to the bed in the openings of the frame below the mattress, otherwise used for restraints, or at the foot of the bed. It cannot be hung from the bracket on the bed frame. With the bed in low position, the bag will touch the floor and substantially increase the risk of caudy. It cannot be hung in the hinge of the bed because when the bed position is moved, it could cause damage to the bed or the Foley bag. The green clip attached to the tubing is a sheet clip used to control and maintain the layout of the tubing. Use this sheet clip to manipulate the tubing so that there are no dependent loops present. A stat lock is also supplied with the kit and can be found attached to the Foley bag. The stat lock attaches the catheter to the patient's leg to protect it from being pulled out accidentally. Date and initial the stat lock. They should be replaced every seven days. The stat lock holds the catheter at the bifurcation. The clamp rotates to accommodate changes in position. The stat lock should be placed on the thigh. The goal is to make sure the catheter is not being pulled or tugged with movement, so there has to be some slack in the tubing. But too much slack could cause twists or kinks in the tubing that would block flow and potentially cause retention or infection. Position the stat lock to allow just enough slack for freedom of movement. Clean the site with an alcohol prep pad. Then prep the site with a provided skin prep pad. Be sure to apply the prep to a larger area than the stat lock will cover. This ensures full coverage of the site. Remove one wing from the back of the stat lock. Place the stat lock in the desired position and make sure the wing adheres to the skin. Close the catheter into the clamp. Stabilize the stat lock by holding the clamp firmly and remove the second wing. There is only one item from the kit that has not been used. With the educational pamphlet, provide the patient or family with information about proper care of their Foley catheter.